Praise the Lord and welcome to the show that you love most, the BR show, the Believe and Receive show. I'm your host, Apostle Sapinda Romi of House of Praise International in Kitengela. You don't want to miss this show today. It's just as the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 15, that can a mother forsake her child at breast and yet she may, I will never forsake thee. This is a true story that highlights Isaiah 49, 15. I want to hear this testimony. Welcome, Pastor Jared. Thank you so much. We are so pleased to have you today. Thank you for taking time to come. Yes, thank you too. Now, tell me, Pastor, straight to the point, you were rejected at birth. Your parents did not even know if you belonged to them. Can you just explain to us what happened exactly that time? Okay. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, at birth, mm. at Pumwani Maternity Hospital mm -hmm. here in Nairobi. Yes. I was born there years back. Mm -hmm. Right at the hospital, there was confusion as to whom child I belonged to. Mm. My mom and another woman, they were disputing over the child who was born. So there were some disputes as to whether the other woman has taken her child as well as herself was like uh, not really sure whether the baby belonged to her or not. And therefore from there, after the uh, disputes and uh, contentious words, exchange of words, none of them was sure exactly as to whether the child who was born, which one belonged to which, because there were two. Okay, now your mom was from what part of Kenya? My mom is from Nyanza. Nyanza. And the lady disputing was from what part of Kenya? Personally, I don't know because at it's, a Bata, story you're being told. it's a story I was told. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. So they started contending. How did they finally settle to whom you should go to? Well, during these days, I'm not sure whether the DNA yeah, yeah, was there. Yeah. And uh, perhaps if the DNA was there, maybe... It would have ruled out to whom you belong. It would have ruled out exactly mm. to whom I belong to. Mm. So because of this, it took the management of the maternity maybe to intervene and perhaps try to separate the two women who are contending. Like, uh, actually it was just done like, you take this child and you take this one. And that was it. And you are both boys. Well... That's another question that uh, uh, I've been asking myself because I don't know. I was just told how these things happened. So you don't know if the other one was a boy or not? Yes, I don't know. You don't know? Yes. Now, Pastor, I think when people give birth in hospitals, there's usually a tag, but this was a rare case where people were disputing. And it's not that it's never happened, it's happened. Yes. Now, tell me something. How did that <coughs> affect you? Well... I can say that it has really affected me right from there and there. Simply because my mom, who took me now, mm. wasn't really sure whether the baby was hers. So, because of that, automatically, that spirit of rejection crept in. Because herself, she wasn't really sure. But she was told, you take this child and you take the other one. Did she so, breastfeed you? Yes, she did. Okay. Yes, she breastfed I'm me. I'm asking because, you know, sometimes it can go to the point of just bringing you up for the sake of bringing you up. Well, there was a father in that house. Yes, there were was a father. Were you treated any differently? And were you the first child, actually, to that well, couple? Well, I wasn't the first child. Actually, I was the fourth born in that family. Mm -hmm. And actually, there were some mistreatments that made me to begin feeling different from, from the, the rest. At what age did you, do you remember being mistreated? Well, right from the age of five years. As because long as you can remember. Yes, that's mm. all I can remember. Both mother and father. Both mother and father. Yeah, if you don't mind and if it's not very emotional to you, yeah. what are a few examples you can give us of what they do to you? Well, some of the examples I can give out clearly is like uh, the, there was a child who was before me 
and the child or I can say that my elder brother mm. we were we had a gap between us of about two years mm. and so he became a bit friendly to me because we could play together mm. but at times I could realize that uh, he was much favored than you than myself mm. it's really painful it is. to see someone that you know as a brother mm. being treated well mm. and yourself you are like uh, we are not really sure of you so what exactly like f wh where in what area were they mistreating you in one particular example probably well apart from doing some favors to my brother I was called names because even my character was totally different from the rest from the rest appearance and other things that came out clearly like uh, I was starting to think like really what is happening and I realized like uh, apart from the favors they even call me bad names sometimes which really affected me in the course of going mm -hmm. for instance if uh, your own dad calls you that you foolish all the time Every time he's calling you foolish. Yeah, you but foolish. he's calling the others. He's not calling the others. Yeah, he's not calling the others. Mm. And uh, another thing is like there was a name that uh, in low language they say Olonono. Mm. Olonono means that you're just better than nothing or oh. better for nothing. You are slightly bit higher than nothing, you see. I get your point. Yes, so when they say Olonono, it means you're just better than nothing. And he kept on saying that. Yes. Without you doing anything bad. Yeah. Without you deserving to be called such names. or, or No one deserved to be called these names. Without you doing anything wrong, innocently they would call you these names. Yes, of course. Uh, to me, I couldn't see any reason why I should be called nicknamed Olonono. Yeah, and such names. And such other names like uh, Useless and uh, other names that doesn't kept really kept ringing in your mind for a very long time yes. and that is why i say as parents we have to be very careful how we talk to our children now did they take you to the same schools as the others yes of course they took me to the same schools as yes. others yes but to some point i realized that uh, they did other favors again even in school to others mm -hmm and I was left out. For instance, I remember sometime in the course of going that uh, they bought textbooks for the other children. children and I was left out, the elder ones and the younger ones. So I being left in the middle, I really cried and it was so painful and I was bitter, like why me, why me? And I went like a sort of protest to my mom why didn't you buy me books as well? Mm -hmm. And uh, she was like, um, uh, you just go. You just go. I don't want anything to do with this. And so it really grieved me. And I started, it uh, made me to continually feel like they have really rejected me. Yes, Pastor, I, I, I can't say I understand, but uh, I, I feel now what you had gone through, especially if you don't have anyone on your side. You're going to your father, you're going to your mother, and uh, especially your father abusing you. And that is the reason why I say that when we are bringing up children, even though they are stepchildren, and even though they are not children of the same household, bring these people up as uh, individuals. You know, you are an individual, you are an individual person, and you should not be brought up as a stepchild, as uh, whatever the world labels you should be brought up as an individual now what point did you just stay at home like now I know you're living in Nairobi at what point did you come out from home when you said enough is enough and I'm not taking this anymore well I remember I had to keep on and on and on trying to do some things that could at least make them love me you see, because I was feeling lonely and rejected, I didn't have many friends. Even in school, it's like those words or names that they used to call me, it's like they had a spirit that was following me. 
that could make even friends just run away from me. They reject you. They reject me. And I was really bitter. And I developed some kind of bitterness that uh, even if you, do, you could do something very minor to me, it appeared to be a very big thing. Mm. And I had problems from time to time, even relating to people, friends who were very few. Mm. Because I was feeling like uh, perhaps they don't love me. I'm hated. No one loves me. Mm. And even if I could meet someone who is genuine that uh, may try to be a friend to me, you would reject I would him reject him and close him or uh, the person out of my life. Mm. Re because I could feel like maybe he's just coming in this form. Mm. I don't really trust him because it was like those spirits were behind those words. Growing up in this situation, then I said, once I finish school, then I'll just quit home and I'll never return again to that home. Mm. For instance, even before I came to the point of quitting home, mm. many times I uh, attempted to do very bad things. Mm. Like because of the bitterness which was inside me, if you could do something wrong to me, mm. I was like, I will kill you, you see. It wasn't like I'll beat you up or something. I was mm. like, I will just kill you. Mm. And if I don't kill you, then I'll just kill myself. Oh. In some instances or occasions, I found myself uh, walking with poison in my pocket. Mm. Like if things doesn't work for me, because they hate me and nobody wants me, what I'm going to do is just to take the poison and I'll just die. And many times others also as well, like uh, uh, they could snatch the poison from me, you see. I remember my elder brother trying to wrestle with me to take the poison from me. And I was struggling to uh, drink, it. drink it. And he really wrestled with me and took it away. Even in times that like, uh, for instance, in primary schools, we could be asked to carry pangas or jembes to school. And uh, in some occasion, I remember a certain boy who wronged me and I was like slashing him, literally. And everybody was running away and I became mad and the whole school was like chaos. And teachers were running upside down trying to calm, to calm the situation. And it was like terrible. So even in uh, school and also at home, Parents knew that, that this guy He's is like dangerous. dangerous. He can just do anything. Because of a lack of love. Nobody yes. wants to give you love. You're desperate for that love. You're not getting it. And you feel like you form a self-defensive. So you become defensive. You want to defend yourself. Now tell me, you now <coughs> moved from home and you came to Nairobi. Yes. And that was uh, when you had finished school. Did you finish school? Yes. And then you came to Nairobi. Yes. And were you uh, older at this time? Uh, I, were you in a position you can work or were you still young? Fine. I remember uh, having been born in Nairobi. We only went to my dad's place in Homa Bay for a few years. Then from there we moved to Narok town. And in Narok is where I've been brought up all the years. I've grown up there and all, m most of these stuffs were taking place in Narok town. Mm. And uh, after school, when now I decided that I'm leaving my parents' home, mm. I went to interior parts of Narok called Narosura. Mm. And I went there to start doing some Vibarua. Mm. And uh, in uh, Narosura is where now I can say that after so many things took place in my life, mm. suffering rejection again it followed you there it followed me there you tried working no one wants to hire you or what okay what happened there was like i was still having that defensive mechanism mm. whereby i don't like having a Pe group of people mm. having people around me so much mm. i developed a private life mm. whereby I, it was hard even to relate with others mm. because i just feel they may not love me mm. and at that point i remember i knew that I'm so bad that no one can love me. Mm. Even the place that sometimes uh, boys as they grow up, mm. it's like they uh, try to uh, talk to ladies or mm. some girls or some relationships. Mm. I didn't. Why? You didn't feel any girl would want you. Yeah. Mm. I didn't feel that any would love me. Mm. After all, no one loves me. 
and some words that my parents could speak to me kept ringing in your kept mind. ringing in my mind one of them that really teared me apart was when i was sick some time back mm. and uh, i used to be sick more often and it was like uh, it was a big problem to them taking me to hospital from time to time then my mom finally said i'm sick and tired of you boy because all the time you trouble me and from there i could not even say i was sick so those things were following me every time i was like i'm just rejected nobody wants me then i started doing some casual work to gain a living for myself you're rejected to the point that you can't even say when you're sick yes i couldn't say when i was sick why because mom said i'm sick and tired of you all the time we take you to hospital all the time you are sick sometimes my teeth are aching and i remember that at some point i was removed like uh, three of my teeth on this side the two down and one up because the whole mouth was aching and so they were really i couldn't eat so i couldn't tell anybody even among the family members that i'm sick and so i was just there and uh, after some times uh, i don't know what happened then my mom realized that things are not okay so when i was asked what is happening with you then i kept quiet but my brother i told him that i'm not well that was after uh, three to four days because i felt like really my mouth is swollen and so i can't do anything anymore so because of that i realized that now i have to speak out to my brother not to my mom because she said i'm tired of you yes that was the point it reached this is so painful it's really so painful for a child to be sick and they can't say that they are sick it's really really painful so how did you come to jesus pastor <coughs> Well, uh I just feel overwhelmed by uh what God has done into my life. Yes. And I can really say that God is good mm. and God is really faithful. Because when I went to look for a living for myself, I had vowed that I'll never return to our home again. Simply because of all the stuff I've explained. Now, As I was trying to earn a living there I remember I decided to engage in so bad things and activities so that I can find solace to myself and I was trying it was like trying to find solace and trying to find solutions now that I'm free from my parents now that nobody can ask me anything because I remember when I used to be in our house Sometimes I could run away and threaten not to return home and they could look for me everywhere. Now that I was alone I decided I'll just run and run and run and I'll not return home. In that situation of trying to run away I joined some boys who were, I can say they were bad boys and we used to do bad things. It was that time that I was introduced into smoking and I started smoking I didn't know how to do it but I was ready to do anything just to find solace for my soul mm. and at that stage they also took me to drink and we could drink moratina mm. and we took it and we took it and day after day they even introduced me like uh, why can't we just begin some uh, uh, some bad group and we can just be taking money from people and some were trying to suggest all this stuff then i said me i'm ready i'm just waiting for you because i was bitter and trying to do anything or to revenge and to just find solace but one day i remember i was coming from kibarua actually uh, it was a quarry where i went to throw the kokotos and the hardcores into the lorry and when i was coming from there crossing the river because it was beyond the river crossing the river going home i saw a certain pastor in that area trying to come to our home 
and to me inside me i had vowed like i never want anything to do with god you know why if god could have seen all my afflictions and he has done nothing about it and i've suffered rejection nobody wants me why couldn't he have saved me so i had said i want nothing to do with god and i don't want to go to any church i don't want to see any preacher and so when i uh, i said like uh, I'll all, i can only get saved when i will be too old and just by the graveside uh, when i know that i'm just about to die then i can get saved but that day when i saw that pastor coming i decided and i told the other guys we were together can we run away i don't want to meet that pastor then we started running and the pastor said you guys come then we said no we are not coming we are very busy then he insisted come please i won't force you to get salvation i'm just coming in peace to see you and just talk to you you see then fortunately we decided let's go and listen to the pastor but we made a resolution that we won't get saved you see and we went and we sat with the pastor and the pastor started preaching to us telling us about the goodness of god telling us about god's love telling us how god loves even the rejected ones he can never send them away and he didn't know what you were going through. yes he didn't know what i was going through mm. then after he mentioned like god never rejects anyone god takes that was the keyword for you yes that was a keyword for me then i i started now concentrating you know at first i was just like let him talk and go yes but when he started mentioning things that pertains my own life then i realized that something different is happening and he continued and he continued then finally after asking me are you ready to get saved uh-huh then i said no then again he proceeded again he asked me are you ready to get saved i said no lastly he said okay i gonna leave you in peace but before i go i gonna read hebrews chapter 2 verse 7 that says Every time you hear the word of God do not harden Adam your hearts heart. yes. as in the days of rebellion in the wilderness. Yes. Then I said God has seen me. Then finally he asked me will you give your life to Jesus? You then I just said yes. And I your will. life changed from there. Your focus changed and you got a calling that <coughs> God is calling you to be a pastor. You became a pastor. And what do you do now in one minute? What do you do now? Okay. After giving my life to Jesus Christ, I moved on with the Lord and I came to a point of realizing my call and currently I can testify that God is really good. He really loves us and uh, right now God has blessed me with the work of music production. But time is gone. We would wish to hear more pastor but our time is gone and we need to end it here but you can see how parents can literally destroy a person's life we should not we should be very careful how we raise our children we don't want them to go through all that if it's not for god where would pastor be i don't even think he would be born again today and do you talk to your parents do they talk to you today well it's unfortunate it's unfortunate that my parents both of them passed, passed away, away many years back oh okay yes all so right. yeah. anyway so i i believe that you must be also your brothers and sisters did they get saved well i can say that um my brother as well passed away my oh. elder sister passed away oh sorry and uh at least four of my sisters passed away plus one of my brother who was my only brother i'm only left with two sisters who finally gave their lives to jesus christ oh that is yes. good pastor we're very sorry for that and how is life now well i can After say salvation. yes thank you i can say like um, jesus christ is the solution Amen. to every problem that we can go through in life yes. i can testify that life is so good yes. because i found solace for my soul yes and f- i the feelings of rejections and everything were went finished. away were oh. finished 
Amen. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Pastor. If you'd like to give your life to this Jesus who changes the life of one who hated God so much, please say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I am a sinner. Forgive me. And I give my life to you, Jesus. From today, I am born again. Well, if you have your testimonies you'd want us to air, contact us. We would love. We want people to know what God is doing today. Thank you very much, Pastor, for coming on the show. God bless you. And thank you so much. Thank you, too. Uh, I just want to say one thing. Let us be very careful how we treat other people because how we treat them can cause them a lot of pain. Till next time, I am Apostle Satvinder Romi on the BR Show, your favorite Believe and Receive. Thank you.